and hello everybody welcome back to the channel guys i hope you're all well before we do get into today's video as always please do smash that like button and subscribe to the channel for daily rangers content guys it's old firm weekend rangers versus celtic in again what's being dubbed as the biggest old firm game in over a decade in terms of the league sort of space of course has been cup finals cup semi-finals along the way but this one is being dubbed as the biggest in over a decade in terms of of the league and to be honest I couldn't agree more guys we've obviously seen and heard from former legends we've also heard from the managers with regards to sort of team news and kind of those things uh, like that and in today's video guys or today's live stream we are going to be talking all things about the old firm in the build-up uh, I was also providing you an update with regards to the sort of team news and these kind of things and just talking about the match in general, the impact of the match, but also going over all the latest Rangers news. As you can see there, a little bit on Ollie McBurney potentially, as stated, just as a disclaimer quickly before any of you think I'm, I'm saying that he's linked. Um, it was just simply from a podcast and him being out of contract. So we're just going to discuss that um, a bit later on and the possibilities of which he could ever, if he could join Rangers this summer, we'll certainly find out. Um, and then also going through through a few other bits and pieces within the Rangers space. But I just want to start on something now quickly, of course. Um, it is Saturday. It's getting closer to 3 o'clock. I think we're about three hours away from kickoff. Um, from, from for some of the other domestic games and down in England and these kind of things. Um, but I just want to touch upon this. And, and if you're watching this on a replay, it may be a little bit different. It may be, um, it might, we've already got an answer. But at the time of recording this live stream, guys, um, Dundee, the pitch fiasco has carried on. Yes, and apparently at the time of recording or the time of streaming, there is going to be a second pitch inspection at one o'clock UK time with regards to them, potentially, um, of course, if they're going to be playing this game against Motherwell. Of course, it has been well documented at this moment in time with regards to this current pitch fiasco. It's been a massive problem, of course, prior to the international break. Our game did get cancelled because of Dundee's pitch not being in a correct and fit state um, to host the game against Rangers. Now, as stated, there's been a lot of news over the last week or so and build up to this weekend. And there had been talk that Dundee's pitch is still not up to the adequate standard to host a top flight game. And of course, they did fail the first pitch inspection, which took place around an hour ago. Um, and of course, the second one is going to be uh, taking place a bit later on or in the next 20 minutes. So depending um, how far we are into this live stream, I'll update you on that and with regards to that. But guys, if you are just piling in, as always, please do smash the old like button um, hit the subscribe button and of course on these sort of live shows you do of course make the experience do get involved in the comments um, in the live chat and let me know your score predictions and your goal scorers for the game against Celtic um, this of course weekend um, so yeah as stated there with that Dundee situation whilst our focus primarily of course is on the old firm uh, we do actually have to play them on Wednesday which is poor, put, putting a bit of a spanner in the works of our sort of title charge and our title pursuit so yeah very interesting there indeed uh, with regards to that but certainly this thing cannot go on any longer um, of course we are coming up to the point where it is going to be post split and the fixtures will need to be played um, but an absolute disgrace an absolute disgrace really with Dundee uh, that they're in a top flight stadium um, or in the top flight of, of Scottish football and they had four games so far this season called off due to their pitch and as I said I keep on bringing up the situation with regards to um, them literally being a stone throw away from Tannadice um, and they're not having a problem with their park there has been alternatives apparently that could take place on Wednesday should they fail the pitch inspection today against Motherwell and that's that they could play the game at a neutral venue so we could be playing at Airdrie so um, it's something we have to watch it's something um, I'll keep you updated on as the time goes on but my goodness me uh, what a disgrace and um, as stated in real time at this moment in time they have failed the first pitch inspection there'll be another one at one o'clock today to see if their game um, against Motherwell will go on um, now, whilst talking about um, certain things, uh, Ollie McBurney has appeared on a podcast, um, actually, over the weekend or over the last 24 hours, um, and discussed, of course, his love for Rangers. Now, two or three years ago, I used to make a lot of content in regards to Ollie McBurney. He had a very, very good season uh, within the championship, I think, um, for Swansea, then got his big money move to Sheffield. Never really worked out in the Premier League the first time around. Uh, however, in the championship, he proved once again that he is a very prolific goal scorer when he 
he's in a sort of attacking team. Again, this season, not really got the numbers uh, that would make you think that um, he could ever do anything for Rangers. Obviously, that kind of old school uh, thinking of trying to get these old Premier League players and try and get them to get going again. Um, but certainly, his contract expires come the end of the season and it's unknown what his situation is going to be. So I'm just floating the idea to you guys. Would you take Oli McBurney as a striker at Rangers on a free contract come the end of the campaign, considering he's a Rangers fan. Um, and he's also stated in a recent interview, literally over the last 24 hours, that Rangers is a club that he wants to play for before he retires and finishes his career. So certainly um, a very interesting one. I'm sure it would be a very div uh, dividing question. Um, I'm sure there'll be a lot of different answers. My one thing that I would say with regards to Wally McBurney is, well, that he is... Um, he is, you know, well, he is, um, he earns a lot of money, um, and he hasn't really shown um, his level of consistency over the last few years. So, um, certainly interesting one. He also doesn't fit into sort of Nils Kupin's, um sort of profile for a player that we're going to be currently recruiting, what we're going to be going for. Um, so, yeah, certainly one that I'm, I'm interested to hear your thoughts down there in the live chat. Would you take Ollie McBurney on a free contract this summer? Yes or no? Let me know down in the live chat or in the comment section below if you're watching it on a replay. Uh, right, let's get to the big one. Let's get to Rangers versus Celtic, the game that everybody's talking about. Everybody um, is talking about it. It's felt like a very long week. Haven't been playing sort of um, two games a week. Um, only been playing them once. Um, and of course, I'm absolutely buzzing for it. I'm very, very nervous for it as well. As stated, I don't really usually get nervous for the old firm derbies um, until the actual day or just prior to kickoff. However, this one I felt on Monday, I was starting to, to feel a little bit nervous with regards to the match. And um, it's going to be a, um, a very interesting one, certainly. Both sides, of course, coming out of the worst in terms of their injury problems. Um, and we've spoke about Celtic um, a couple of times and stated that they do have key players returning. Callum McGregor, Rio Atate. Um, Cameron Carter Vickers all coming back into the sort of fold and will be fit and are ready and available uh, for the game against Rangers, which is a big boost to them, of course. Now, on our side at this moment in time, of course, Philippe Plummer did provide an update and said that Ridvan Yalmez is currently a doubt, of course, um, for the game. He did say that he'll probably see on the day or the last training session prior to the match. Um, however, did state that everyone else um, from last weekend is available. We also said um, something um, with regards to Seema. Of course, Seema has been the talk of the town of course been out injured for a considerable amount of time and has stated that he is fit enough to start but could not play 90 minutes so he has a de decision to make on when he best will have an impact um, on the occasion himself the boss said um, it's a big game we know it's not yet a decisive game whoever wins this is not champions I'm really happy with what I've seen from my team and the points we have collected since the last old firm we have consistently but that is not a guarantee for anything I see my team growing month by month from the beginning, I have been clear. I don't want a team that stays in emotion from a result and the next game, they're not there. Um, so, of course, has provided us with a bit of an update. Um, good that we're not really having too many injuries going into this clash, thankfully. Um, but, yeah, I think we have a strong enough lineup to, to get a result, especially here at Ibrox. Now, uh, something I've seen quite consistent between Brendan Rodgers and Philippe Clement's uh, press conferences is that they both said the game is not a must-win. Well, I'm going to argue against that. I do think the game is a must-win for both teams. Yes, the title isn't over, and... Um, it wouldn't necessarily be over, but I do believe it is a decisive game and will have a say on who wins the title. I personally think, genuinely, in my heart, wholeheartedly, if Rangers win this game against Celtic, we'll go on to win the title. That's just my opinion at this moment in time. It's just something what I feel. If we lose the game, I do think um, it could pose us some problems and we would certainly, certainly be on the back foot despite only being two points behind if we win our game in hand against Dundee. Um, a draw, of course, is still within our hands, but I just feel... I would like a safety net going into that game against Celtic at Celtic Park. Whether we can just go there, get a draw, and even on the worst case scenario, lose but still have the title on our hands. That's why I do think that this is a decisive one. Because we either have to win this one or we have to win the next one to be champions. For me, we have to win one of the two old firm derbies to be champions. And, well, you don't have to be a genius to work out that, of course, we have the much better advantage at Ibrox 
in front of our supporters, 100% um, fans in there, no Celtic fans in attendance. So there isn't a better time, of course, to go out there and get these three points on the board. And as stated, I do certainly believe in me that if we do win this game, I think we'll go on to win the title. Uh, guys, let me know down there in the comment section below if you think we'll win the title if we go on to win this game, as stated. Let me know down there in the old comment section below. Um, but yeah, interesting. I'm looking forward to the clash, most certainly. I can't wait. I think... I don't know what to say. I'm, I'm, it's about what, we're 24 hours away. So there's not going to be any videos tomorrow. There's not going to be any live streams. Of course, after the game, I'll come on and give my thoughts on the match itself. Um, but we need to, we really need to, to go at it from the sort of first whistle. I know it's always being said in these derbies, but I do think that first 10 minutes, setting the tempo, setting, uh, trying to get the crowd on our side will be very, very important for this game. And hopefully, hopefully, hopefully we can win the match um, and the Rangers can get all three points. Um, are you live streaming the game tomorrow? I'm unsure just yet, guys. I'm coming back from Asia literally on Wednesday. Um, so I will be back to live streaming again on a regular basis. The reason why I haven't been able to do so is because of the time zones. Um, and the fact that I'm, I'm currently, yeah, and I'm currently, I've got people in and around me that kind of, you know, live near me and me getting up at four in the morning or wherever the time is uh, when a game is on or when a Rangers game is on. Um, yeah, I, I watch every game, of course, but I just watch it like on the TV. But uh, me getting up at that time can, yeah, just cause nuisance for the neighbours, if you get what I mean. Um, shouting and screaming at four in the morning. So I have to be a little bit respectful. But of course, tomorrow's kickoff is about seven o'clock. So, uh, yeah, I may come on and do a live stream. I'm unsure just yet. There's a few Rangers boys out here. Uh, we say the Bali Loyal. Um, and we're all going to be watching the game tomorrow as well. So um, if you are in Bali, guys... Jump down and watch the game. Watch the game um, with me. As I said, if you're if you're there, I think everybody's going down to the to the bench to watch it. Um, so if you are in in, in Bali, then um, jump down. Jump down and say hello. It'll be a good one. Um, do you think we'll win tomorrow? Is it Ian Spence? I do. In my heart, I think we will win. Um, I think we will win. I think we'll win two one. I can't see us losing. Um, funnily enough, I think. Uh, the worst result that I feel that could happen is a draw, um, but I do I do genuinely believe within myself that um, Rangers can go on and win this game. But it's all down to uh, the, the thing that doesn't fill me with confidence is the striking department. Like, that's the truth. I've not been quiet on that. I've not been coy on that. I've not you know denied that. I do genuinely believe that our problems at this moment in time and going into this game is our a quality in the attacking areas. And that's why I do think Seema having an impact in, in the game in some sort of way could be absolutely crucial and absolutely pivotal to us. Um, but no, I do think, I do genuinely believe we will win to, to answer your question, in all honesty. Uh, the top hat man says 3-2, Dessa's Lawrence, then last minute John Beaton diving header. Look, I would love Dessa's to score a goal. And to be fair, a big goal in, in an old firm derby to, to potentially clinch the title uh, would be probably massive for him in terms of a confidence booster. Look, Philippe Clement, other players have kind of kind of came out in the build-up to the game and spoke about him. Clement, I've seen his comments that every single month he's getting better and better and he can see that he's getting better. Or certainly he's a complete different player from the player that was there when he came in five months ago, which I do agree with, um, but certainly still needs to... Um, I don't know what it is with him in terms of the, the actual finishing. I think Derek Ferguson said it perfectly. Look, he's a striker, but certainly looks like a player that needs to be coached and, and doesn't have the, the natural instincts of a striker, which he is, to put the ball into the back of the net. So I always find him a very, very interesting character um, and someone that, of course... Um, yeah, I don't think is good enough, but of course I, I'm always going to back any Rangers player to, to to score as long as they're wearing a their Rangers jersey. Of course I want them to do well, but I just do have my doubts with regards to him, and I sometimes have a feeling that if there's a big chance tomorrow that lands to him, I'm not confident at all. I'm really not. If if Kemar Roof was on the pitch, yeah, I think he would bury it every single time, but. With Dessas, it just fills me with a bit of anxiety that there could be like a one-on-one -on -one with the goalkeeper moment. There could be a chance as an open goal and he would spoon it over and it would literally um, 
probably be like Frankfurt in my mind with regards to, to Ryan Ken. Um, that still plays back in my mind even after all this time. So I'm hoping that, of course, he does get a goal. I'm hoping that we, we don't have any, we don't miss any big chances. But I do think our, our problem certainly is attacking wise. Um, the rest of the field, I think, were okay. Borna Barisic playing at left back. And I think Borna does get a lot of criticism from the from the, the fans. Um, I've probably been one of them in recent times, but yeah, he needs to put in a good game because you don't know what Borna Barisic is going to show up half of the time, and especially in the big game. Sometimes he goes missing, and I think Ridvan's been a lot more comfortable down that left hand side. I think he's been a lot better at left back for for us since the sort of January transfer window. So um, yeah, I do think it would be a big blow if if if. Um, if Red Van's not playing, um, but here's hoping that maybe he can get in. Um, the centre-back partnership, who would you go for? Troops, who would you go for? Let me know down in the live chat. Who would you go for in terms of a centre-back partnership? Golds and Suter, let me know. Obviously, Tavern is going to start on that right-hand side. You're probably going to be going with Lundstrom in the middle. Um... I mean, I'm trying to think at the top. Where are we going to be going? Is it going to be is it going to be a debate of Silver or Dessers? Or is Silver and Dessers going to play? It all depends a lot on Seema as well. So it's, it's going to be a very, very interesting one indeed. And um, it's, we're in a lot better place, I think, in terms of our players coming back as well. So hopefully we do, as stated, get the job done against Celtic. We need to. I, I don't know how we've lost so many, but... Um, so many old firm derbies this season. Cantwell could be pivotal in the middle, maybe play as the sort of number 10. He's good at his sort of creative outlet. Of course, did get an assist in the last game against um, Hibernian. Uh, Diamande, I think, has been fantastic as well. Um, I don't know. It's just uh, it's a bit of change with the, the positions. Um, win like they did last time. Big Seamer is running at the Murrah. We Atate will be ran ragged. Um, I do think, of course, he is their best player. I do think Rio Atate will dictate a lot of the game from their perspective. But I think I think we can shut them up early. I think we can push them into a hole by just that first 10 minutes at Ibrox. I think um, Ibrox has the capabilities with some bigger, better teams than Celtic come to Ibrox and absolutely collapse, have their arse fall out. So um, we can do the same thing with, these, with this lot, honestly. Um, whilst they do have a full-strength team coming back, and probably on paper... I suppose this is going to be a bit controversial, I suppose. I'd say on paper... If you look at a fully fit Rangers team and a fully fit Celtic team, in terms of the, the starting eleven, I would say Celtic's starting eleven is better than Rangers. But... What is it? I mean, Celtic have been poor this year as well, to be fair. They've, they've done a lot, but... Mm, I suppose it is a bit controversial. I mean, I think they're just as bad as each other. I don't think we're actually that good, to be perfectly honest. I just think Philippe Clement's done wonders with our team. I still think there's a lot of work for us to do in the summer, and I'm really actually excited uh, going into the summer, actually, in terms of seeing some new players come in and, and, and some players going out the door. I don't know that would be big for us. Um, play Pish and win like they did last time, says it. Oil is utter Pish. Um, he better no sign in the summer. Oh, Oli, sorry. Uh, Shanklin should be getting signed. Guys, look, I didn't say that. By the way, if you are just tuning in, you've seen Oli McBurney to Rangers, question mark. It's, it's, it was just, uh, he was speaking on a podcast and said that he wanted to play for Rangers. His contract uh, coincides and, and basically expires in the summer. Um, so it was just throwing it towards you guys. Would you want him to be a potential striker for Rangers? My personal opinion, probably not. I kind of like the route we're going down with sort of Nils Koopen. Um I do like Oli as a person in terms of a Rangers fan like, like us, but I do... Um, I don't think he's our answer in terms of a striker. I think I, I kind of want to see. I think Nils Cooper is, is going on to something. He's on to something with this recruitment strategy that he's got going on. And the players that he brought in, whilst Oscar Cortez is out, I've already liked the looks of sort of Diamande there in the middle of the park. I liked Oscar Cortez at the start of this uh, at the start of the of the year as well when he came in as well. So I think that would be very exciting to see what the summer holds for Rangers. Um, but I, I think yeah, I don't think Ollie McBurney would, would fit our sort of transfer strategy. In my personal opinion. Um, 
<laughs> guys, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button if you haven't already, guys. Let's try and get this to uh, 200 likes. Uh, Sledgehammer says we need more Scots. Look, that's just one of those things as well. Look, there could be potentially Ryan Jack leaving this summer. John McLaughlin counts as a Scottish player, so he's leaving as well um, in the summer. So you are right. We could do with some, some more Scottish players coming through the door, but some would say, look, if you have the choice out of Shankland, you have the choice out of Ollie McBurney. Shanklin would be a lot cheaper. Yes, we'll pay a transfer fee, but I feel Ollie McBurney would demand lots more in terms of wages. Um, but I think I would probably just about go for... Actually, I don't know. It's a hard one, you know. I think sh I think McBurney's a lot better in, in, uh, in the championship. When he's playing in an attacking team, I, I think he's a really good striker. But I feel like he'd be a bit like a Cedric Itton for us, and that never really worked for us. So, hmm... I would, I would probably, I'd probably go with Shankland um, if we were to go get a striker. But I'd rather, uh, honestly, I'd rather one of these unnamed guys. I didn't know Diamande, I didn't know Oscar Cortez. I'd rather one of these sort of um, younger prospects coming through the door who that fit the sort of mould, uh, and then we could go from there. But yeah, um, but yeah, guys, I think that's it really in terms of the actual news. Let me have a little look through um, some other stuff with regards to that Dundee Motherwell game. Let's see if there's a further pitch inspection. No, but that's an absolute disgrace, isn't it? Um, further pitch inspection. It's unplayable. It, there's a very good chance that that game, by the way, could get called off for the fifth time this season at Dens Park. That's an absolute disgrace. Genuinely, absolute disgrace. <sighs> Mental. And there's a good chance, by the way, it gets called off. We'll find out in 10 minutes. Alexander says Rangers 1-0 to have penalty. I mean, that wouldn't bother me too much, to be fair. Uh, win tomorrow, I think, and we win the title. This game is very unpredictable. There's no consistency this season for either. We've been getting results, but for performances, inconsistent. I mean, the law of averages, can we lose that many old firm games in a season? Um, that's the way I'm going on it. That's the way I'm thinking on it. Um, hopefully not. <laughs> I mean, the other side, of the Celtic fans would say that they have a good record against, or Brendan Rodgers has a good record in the Old Firm derbies, but when he was coming up against Mark Warburton and Pedro Canetia, you know, I don't think, and I think Gerrard started to get a, a decent one over him, uh, despite losing the league titles when we were in that sort of building phase, his first season back. Uh, we won that sort of old, we won two Old Firms, um, Gerrard against Brendan Rodgers, and then after that, of course, um, Gerrard dominated for a while after... Um, Neil Lennon left, and then under Geo we were a bit crap <laughs> in terms of the old firm derbies, except from the the Scottish Cup semi final, um, and then under the, under Mick Bill we won that sort of meaningless one if you get what I mean. So um, yeah, we've not been very very good in the old firms, but look, here's hoping that we can get the job done. Um, tomorrow uh, but you know what guys that's me I'm going to dip um, do let me know your thoughts everything I want to know score predictions I want to know goal scorers down there in the comments I want to know um, if we win this do we have one hand on the title or is it too early to say if we lose this do you think we'll go on to win the title? I want to know uh, your thoughts and explanations down there in the comment section below. Um, and as always, guys, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and I will see you tomorrow, hopefully after Rangers win. I'm praying for it.